All right, folks. God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It Before the Fire. Guys, you know, uh, yeah, I used to have a little trouble sometimes believing myself that I am who I am in Christ. It's just, it's hard to believe, but I'll be able to do this video with 100% confidence. So anyway, so obviously the last video, um, by the way, I'm wearing a shirt that says, don't stop. Don't stop. The finish line is right in front of you. Don't give up. Trust in Christ and all your ways acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. Okay, don't don't stop, guys. We're at the end. The end is coming. I, I can assure you. The end is coming quickly. So now, listen. I want to share with you just scripture and revelation of scripture and our manifestation of the proof of that scripture. I'll say that again. I'm going to share with you scripture, the word of God, the meaning of those words, and a supernatural physical manifestation of the proof of the scriptures that you're looking at are perfect. The scriptures are perfect. So let's start with one place. Let's start there. You know, let, let me ask you a question to begin. It's a yes or no. Is Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, is he the Lord God in the flesh? Is he the highest God? Is he the God of everything in the flesh? It's a yes or no answer. I'll give you a minute. The answer is yes. If you know, you know, if you know Jesus, you know who he is. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. That's what the Bible says. He is the head of everything. So anything that is not the Lord God or the, let's say the almighty God, anything below that certainly can't be Jesus, can it? The answer is no. Because Jesus is the Lord God in the flesh. He's the King of Kings and the Lord, Lord of Lords. He's the Lord God incarnate. Yes? That's exactly what the Bible says. Let me show you something. Okay? We're going to do some scriptures. And then I'm going to show you the coronavirus. Get ready, folks. Ready? We're going to do the coronavirus. All the supernatural data now is going to be the biggest blessing to you you ever even imagined. Y'all ready? Oh, by the way, uh, the last video I did, I was so jacked up excited. It was like finding the last piece to a million piece puzzle. It's like, have y'all ever done like a thousand piece puzzle? You know, I, in my family, everybody would take one or two pieces and go hide them, right? We used to do them on our dining room table. So we would have all this stuff laid out, you know, I'd come home from school, someone would work on it for a little while, get a couple of pieces. I mean, you know, you always knew your brother or your sister. I mean, if you, in my family, you're always going, okay, who's got the light? So, you know, and then I, inevitably you'd get down to a, a few number of pieces and then, you know, all of a sudden, oh, I got this piece. And, you know, someone would come up with the piece because they'd put it aside. Well, Jesus had put the pieces of the puzzle aside in a, in a timing for me on a personal level that was like, I mean, it was like, it was the coup de grace Jonathan Kleck's ministry when I, you know, when I was able just to simply put together the, the words in a different order. I've been telling you guys for a long time, I'm like, guys, the Bible says in Isaiah 29, 15 and 16, it's right here in plain sight. Surely you're turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. That's that's what belongs to the Lord God from Genesis 2. That's how I always said it to y'all. Those are the words I always use. And then the Lord showed me a little more scripture, and he gave me a, that little piece of the puzzle to where I was like, oh my gosh, I get it. Because first comes the natural man, the earthy man. Genesis 1. Next comes the spirit. Genesis 2. And so we'll look at that in just a little while. But let's talk. Let's talk. And then I'm going to show you some amazing scriptures. 
And I also want to give, you know, shout out to Michael, my friend in Grand Junction, and this is family. They're awesome. The Lord had Michael and I have an event together because obviously he predestined Michael and I to have certain things together and things in common. One thing Michael and I have done for a long time is since the Lord opened up the scriptures, since he told me I'm, I'm giving you the unrolled scroll. So one thing Michael and I do is iron sharpens iron. So I'll, I'll, I'll say, dude, look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so obvious. Jesus said, do not your own scriptures say, I said, ye are gods. Okay, well, you can't argue with Jesus saying that if he's talking to his own creation, he said, hey guys, your own scriptures say, I said, you're gods. You know, and so then I'd go to Psalm 82. And I'm like, that's right here in Psalm 82. I've said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. See, so we're all gods. We're all children of the most high. But you will die like men. You will fall like one of the princes. So uh, those are those are the scriptures. So what Michael and I used to do is we used to play a little game, which is like, okay, I got this scripture. And then Michael would be like, oh, okay, I got this scripture. And so we would come back at each other with different scriptures that proved out exactly what I was saying. So I got I to clean my screen a little bit there. Anyway, so I'm going to kind of do, do a little bit of that that Michael and I used to do. And uh, in a, follow, a video that's going to follow this up, we moved a bunch of stuff to the new platform, and we're doing concise folders now for posterity's sake. I'm, I'm reorganizing all these folders from the old platform into short, little, small, compact folders of 50 to 100 images that are all just bullet points. So someone can open it. It's like all dragons or all girls and insects or, you know, all serpents and you know, all right side up, upside down, all clothing that shows they're here to kill us, you know, and we'll have all these cool folders. But anyway, so that video is going to come in a little while. Uh, but this video tonight, we're going to kind of present the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the word. So let's do it. Let's do the proof is in the word. Ready? So what did I start this video with? Is it true or not true? Jesus is the almighty God come in the flesh. Yes or no? Yes, he is. What do you think this is all about? Do you think anyone else could redeem us from the curse of the law? By, by, the, by the way, you know what the word curse means, right? Kata in a downward position. Kata anathema. That's what the word curse is. Downward position curse. <laughs> That's why Peter was crucified head down. Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of, uh, kingdom of heaven, Peter. Oh, put a key in a lock. You turn the lock the other way, and the door opens. So I'm going to help everybody understand this to a point that you're just going to be in tears. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Go get some Kleenex. It's going to be fun. Ready? Okay, you know what? I said that. Now I'm like, oh, I forgot I have a coffee in the car. Stay there. It'll only seem like less than a second. I'm going to pause it. See, I told you it only seemed like a second. <laughs> wow, that's some hot coffee. It's so good. Okay, y'all ready to freak out? Y'all ready? So, again, I know I'm repetitive. I'm supposed to be. we got to unprogram your brains. Ready? Um, so, is Jesus the Lord God come in the flesh, yes or no? Yes, he's the almighty God in the flesh. So let me ask you a question. Got a question for everybody. Everybody. So when Jesus was crucified, did he call out to his dad? It's a yes or no answer. Well, of course he did because he said, Ali, Ali, Lama Sabakthani, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It's amazing the logic that so many pastors and guys that run churches have overlooked this or blatantly kept secret, whatever the case may be. So he did, he said in Matthew 27. These are the words he said right here in Matthew 27. 
And by the way, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. See, I'm going to highlight the ninth hour. From six to nine. Now, I have a question. Is a six an upside down nine? It's a yes or no. Let's take a look at that. Let's just, we're going to... We're going to really just knock this thing out of the park today, okay? So let me see where my Google Images are. Google Images, number 6-9 art. Number 6-9, let's see. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Number 6-9. Let's see if it pulls that up. There you go, number six nine. Let's take a look at the number six nine. There you go. Uh, here's a. There you go. Here's a number six nine right right here. That's like a yin and yang. There, there's a six nine with hand signals. Uh, there's a six nine. So there's an in, like an infinity six nine. So, is it was it safe to say that a six is simply an upside down upside down and backwards nine yeah or no let's see so if i flip this this upside down this this nine it's it's a backward six so the nine is upside down and backwards a six is an upside down backwards number nine it reminds you of this guy named jonathan Clegg that told you to that told you a testimony about reading the tags and the clothing the night he got saved he said the Lord told him to read the tag. He said 100% of my life. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Just look at the number six nine. From the sixth hour, there was darkness because your brains and your your flesh, you live in a host body that is completely upside down and backwards to the spirit of the living God. So now watch. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, See, Eli, but it's really pronounced Ali, Ali, Lama Sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So let's go to Esword. Which is, and I'm going to, while it's loading, I'll tell you, this is, this is a fact. In the Bible, Paul said, no man taught me the scriptures. I was taught by the revelation of Christ himself, as was I. I was saved in a supernatural way. I had a supernatural event the night I got saved. And I was not taught the scriptures by any man. No man taught me the scriptures. The Lord God himself was my teacher, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit himself will teach you all things. His teaching is true and contains no lie. 100% no lying. So let's go. Here we go. We're going to go to, we'll come back to uh, that, but we're going to go to Matthew. Ready? Enjoy yourselves, guys. This is the greatest information in the world we're going to be doing during the, this video it's just going to keep coming now from the sixth hour to the ninth hour there was darkness over all the land from the sixth hour unto the ninth hour and about the ninth hour jesus cried in a loud voice saying ali ali now let's say how do you pronounce that word it's pronounced ali what word is this oh it's a word from hebrew origin right here from the hebrew origin 410 right there you see it so if you want to know what ali ali means all you have to do is click on that right there and it means the almighty god hebrew word 410 and i've been showing you this guys over and over and over again and when you click on that from 352 it means properly strength uh specifically the chief a chief politically also a ram from its 
So I'm going to change all that to a really nifty color. So a ram in Jesus, we know, is a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Sheep is synonymous with Jesus. We're his sheep. So there it is. But when you go back and you look at Hebrew word for 10, everybody tell me, what is it? It's L. See it right there? L, E-L. It's pronounced L, A-L-E. It's E-L. So when Jesus cried in a loud voice, he said, Ali, Ali, which is L, L. Why is thou forsaken me? So now here's the trillion dollar question. trillion dollar question ready and Elohim said gods that are of the supreme God angels and magistrates so the word elohim is hebrew word 430 i'm going to change that color to yellow because i highlighted it here in yellow so and elohim said let us make man in our image so let me ask you a question how could jesus possibly cry out ali ali lama sabachthani if elohim is the creator Oh my God, Jonathan Kleck just proved everything he's been saying right there in front of us in a very simple, very easy to understand scripture. Ali Ali, Lama Sabakhtani. So if the Lord God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is the one who forsake Jesus, which is the Lord God in the flesh, which is him forsaking himself for the good of everybody. Why didn't he cry out, Elohim, Elohim? Because it's not Elohim, that's why. I told you. <laughs> oh, it gets better. <laughs> Ready? I think everybody could probably use a hug right now, yeah? Because it's so good. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> L. L. Why has thou forsaken me? Not Elohim, Elohim. We are the Elohim. I'll prove it. Everything I say, I can prove with the scriptures, with the word, the word of God. Let's do it. Ready? So, and Elohim said, uh, said, let us make, to do or to make, man, a human being hypocrite in our vein show see the word vein show i'm going to highlight that like a really yeah i'm going to highlight it the same color that it is right above it's high see the word image right there is Salem. i'm going to change these colors so it's the same so the word image right there Salem 6754 Salem right there Salem. it means a phantom it means figuratively and you know in a figurative sense it means an illusion and it means a resemblance hence a representative figure especially an idol does does the king of kings and the lord of lords like idols it's a yes or no oh did you know one of the ten commandments is i am the lord your god that led you out of egypt the house of bondage you, by the way, which is the host body system. You shall not make unto yourself any graven image or any likeness of anything in the heavens, the earth, the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And I will visit the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generations of those that hate me. Yes. So if you make an idol, you hate God. Oh, so if you make a host body, you hate God? I don't know. Let's check it out. 
let's go look at the scripture where it says that. It says in Exodus, oh, hang on, Exodus 20. Exodus 20. I am the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, thy God. So, Elohim, he is the cumulative sum in, in charge of all of them, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage, a servant, bondsman, servant. It means to enslave. Look, to work in any sense, by implication, to serve, to till, you know, like Cain, to till, to enslave, keep in bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. No other what? Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, an idol. Oh my gosh. Any graven image. You shall not make any graven image or any likeness of anything in the heavens, the earth, or bodies under the earth. Ready? Ready? S something portion that is fan fashioned out, like a host body, as a shape that is indefinitely. What? A phantom? Oh my gosh, a phantom. That's in Genesis 1. Specifically, embodiment. Oh, wow. We weren't supposed to be in human host body. So no, no. You know why? Because it's evil. It's got to be redeemed. Something portion that is fashioned out of shape as an indefinitely phantom or specifically embodiment. You shall not make something for your embodiment. There's more. <laughs> There's lots more. So just get ready. Let's do it now. Let's just knock it out of the park. Y'all ready? So, Matthew 27, back there, just to recap, recapitulate. Matthew 27, and again, and the sixth hour to the ninth hour, six is the flesh. 666 six, six is carbon, were carbon life forms. There was darkness because the host body system is pure darkness. It's upside down and backwards to the spirit of the living God until the ninth hour when it was accomplished. And the Lord cried out, Ali, Ali, from Hebrew word 410. No one can argue with this. It is El, the Almighty God, right there. And it is a ram from its strength. Okay, now. Ready? Here we go. Let's have some fun. Let's go to Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me in the words of my from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I am not silent. So thank you, Michael, for sending me this one. This one's awesome. This is the little game we used to play, Michael and I. It's a great game, Iron Sharpens Iron. So ready? So here we go. We'll go to Psalm 22. You ready? My God, my God. Ready? Why hast thou forsaken me? So what is the word for my God? Let's, let's highlight my God, my God. Well, God, by golly, I'm going to make it green every time I see Hebrew word for 10. So Hebrew word 410 is always going to be green when I highlight. My God, my God, Hebrew word 410, L. You know what? I'm going to highlight this green. You know what? There we go. I'm going to highlight it green every time I see it. I'm going to make that the new color for highlighting L. E-L is green on this computer. Okay, there we go. So, L, L, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And the words of my roaring, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not in the night season, and I am, 
and am not silent. Well, who's this? Elohim. Wait a minute. I told you so. Oh, oh my God. I cry. So he's, there's two different things going on here. That's why no one could properly, fully understand the Bible. That's why the Lord made me the delivery boy. That's why I protected it from the night I got saved. I guarded the truth. I protected it. I worked on it. I studied it. I studied. I studied. I got up at four in the morning, five in the morning before work, and I read the scriptures and I prayed before I go do construction. Lord, make this known to me. Let me understand your word. And he did. And now he delivered it on a platter to me because I stuck with it because he predestined me for it. So now you ready? See, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's talking about the Almighty, just like Jesus. This was a foreshadowing of the coming of Christ. Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. Elohim. See right there? That's, now, that is the Elohim thing is the cumulative sum of those that were sent out, that, that left heaven. It's a cumulative sum force. Okay, it's many in one. It's on the back of the dollar bill, the all seen eye, e pluribus unum. Okay, now, y'all ready? Now, let's go to, okay, so back to Matthew. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land because you went to a flesh party, and the flesh party is all darkness. And then you get kicked out of the, then you get kicked out of the flesh party, and guess who gets you? The angel of the bottomless pit, because you're judged. Nine, nine. The angel of the bottomless pit. Revelation nine eleven. Now watch this. Let's watch a commercial real quick. Now remember, y'all remember what the word Cain means, don't you? To strike a musical note sound of mourning and sadness that's what the name kajin means i'm showing it to you i've looked it up okay ready there is the number six on the door he's holding this bottle like an erection by the way i can see all there i i see everything guys when it comes to this stuff the lord lets me see and understand it all he's holding that bottle like that for a reason oh did you see what just happened? There were two noises that happened simultaneously. When he rang that bell, the sound of the piano changed, and look what happened. So it went from calmness and peace into a wild, frenzied flash party. Uh, let me just show you how to... You see the what's holding the clothing? What's what's right here? That's a lightning bolt. It's a neon lightning bolt on the wall. Isn't it interesting that it's not lit up? And here he comes walking in. Look what's holding the garments. Okay, so now he is being lured in, he's walked in, and here's where he consummates his eternal destruction. Wait a minute. What was the number behind him? Uh, so there's the number 11 behind him. Now when he turns this 6, and he goes upside down and it's in backwards, it's a nine because when he rolls it that way, it becomes a nine. Shouldn't the 11 be on the same side of the hall? Well, of course it should. 9-11. So now he's all disheveled. He's been defiled because he went to a flesh party. The flesh is in opposition to the spirit of the living God. Told you. So I just showed you a commercial that's no different than Matthew 27, 
46. Don't you find that a little bit strange? <laughs> There's lots more. <laughs> All right, let's just get out of that. Okay, so did you wait? I'm going to. I'm going to go back. And then they handed him at the end of the commercial. They hand him the. They show the red star. Let's see. Because we're all stars. We're princes of the most high God. See, there, look, there he is dancing with the woman in scarlet. And then, look, there's the two stars. There it is. So anyway, so this is a commercial in which they're making fun of you. And notice one of the bottles right here says light. See the light? Light and this one together. So the two together, a woman in scarlet and one of God's angels, bam, and you're in trouble. And you just got judged. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and drop that out. Y'all saw Psalm 22. My God, Eli, L, L. It's not even Ali, Ali. It's it's L, L. Psalm 22. Look, my God, L, L. And when Jesus said Ali, Ali, it's same thing, L, L. Now, Genesis. So Elohim said, let us create man in our image after our likeness. So they did create them male and female. They created, created he him. Male and female created he them. So see, God gave me the ability and he gave me a supernatural vision that I could see the largest altar in the world is really a dead sheep, but it's a penis and a vagina oh you know what that is that's what it takes to create the flesh the host body system male and female so you have the host body system as an idol that everybody's on their face worshiping facing opposite directions all the proselytes that worship the flesh and here they all are see the dead sheep and you see that I'll, there you go, see the dead sheep? There they all are worshiping it. They're worshiping the host body is what they're worshiping. The host body is where the angel from the bottomless pit gets his food from. That's how the serpent, the angel of the bottomless pit that's attached to the serpent race above ground, the little plant, the, the little bait that was set, the trap, the earthly body, it lured God's children away. That's attached to the pit. The serpent race is attached to the pit, death. And then Adam as Christ's representative, so he could get back who he wants, he allows Adam. As his representative, he breathes into him a living soul. And then he puts him to sleep and takes Eve from his side. Eve's allowed to fall. Eve falls. And then Adam becomes part of the fall with her. You have male and female from Genesis 1, male and female from Genesis 2. And the two sets come together. And you have a new race with life and death in the same host body. Whoever tries to save his life will lose it, though. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find true life. It all is perfect. If your eye become single, your whole body is full of life because there's a right side up you and there's an upside down you. There's a good you and there's a bad you. There's a five and five you. There's a double you. That's why it makes an X in the middle right here. When you take a V and a V and you put them together, it makes an, it makes a W, but there's an X right in the middle. X marks the spot where the two touch. And that's, that's why when you take the male and female reproductive systems on this, I mean, you got to give it to these guys. They know what they're worshiping. I mean, check this out. I mean, look at, look at this. Look at how X marks a spot. Ready? 
I mean, seriously. For this to do that, look at that. I'm, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab it right in the center. There, X marks a spot. See it? And what is X marks a spot? It's where male and female touch. See it? And that's where the two come together. A right side up triangle made by the ears of the sheep right here. See the triangle that goes right up here to the center and goes right down. Well, you have male. There's because you have why well, in, in case anyone doesn't remember or hasn't seen it, you have male right here. You have male right here. And then when you turn it upside down, you have female right here. So you have male right side up, female upside down, and then I'll put the female back here, and then I'll take the I'll take the male part of the altar with the penis, and I'll just intersect the window to where it's the same, and it makes X marks a spot because this is where the whole dimension happened, right there, right where the two meet. That's where the flesh, that's why they worship male and female because in Genesis 1, they created them. So Elohim created man in his own vain show. Representatives figure, especially an idol. In the vain show, representative figure, especially an idol, of Elohim created he him. That's Lucifer. Created he him. Male and female created he them. So who created male and female in Genesis 1? El, the Almighty God, or Elohim? Well, Elohim does it right there. So God, the Lord God, sends Adam into the system as his representative, which is made, which is made manifest in 1 Corinthians 15, 55. And I'm going to go there right now, and then we have more scripture, and we're going to just knock this thing out of the park. 1 Corinthians 15, and then we'll... Okay, now watch. Let, let's, read a, uh, let's read a little bit more before we get down to the high, highlighted stuff. Okay. Just like there are different types of beasts and other fishes, different types of flesh, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial worldly, physically, morally, earthly, in earth, terrestrial. Okay, but the glory of the celestial, look at this, celestial, above, from the sky, from heaven. So a heavenly body, and I mean, we're talking about, you know, like a glorified body. So a celestial one, and the glory of the terrestrial, worldly or physical or morally is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star different from another star. A star, literally or figuratively, by the way, we are stars. Each one of us is a star. There is one, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and dead. Stars are different from one another. Okay, and now let me show you this. So, so as is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown through the idea of extending, huh, to scatter, that is to sow, literally, figuratively, receive seed. It is sown in dishonor, in dignity, vile, reproach. You know, there you go. Shame. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Glory as in very apparent dignity. Truthfully. Truth or truthfully. It is so it is raised in truth. How about that? And there is a spirit, let's see, and it, it is spiritual by his natural body. I'm sorry. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 
It is sown in a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam. Read it for yourself. Adam, I'm going to change the color to all. I'm going to change the color to bright blue. Bright blue. The first man, Adam. And I'm going to do this. Bright blue. I want to keep my colors the same. The first man, Adam. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay. Well, the only living soul in the Bible that was made a living soul, called the first man, is in Genesis 2. That's when the Lord God forms as a potter, because God's a potter, where the clay, his children are. So, let's just do it real quick. Let's, you know, I believe in showing you every scripture right now, every scripture. So, in Genesis 1... They don't form anything. It says, let us create and let us make man in our image. So here it is. So to do or to make, see it right there in the broadest sense, widest application, to become, bestow, bring forth man in our vein show. So Elohim created, see right there, man, created as a formative process. Also, it means to cut down okay because it was actually cutting down god's angels to get them to do it so elohim created man in his own vein show in the vein show of elohim created him male and female created he them okay so that's not arguable let's see so okay let me go back now Okay, that is very, very different than Genesis 2. Here it is. And Genesis 2 says, These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, here's where a lot of people don't understand. Picture a big invisible balloon that's got tons of little dots, little light dots in it right here in front of me, right? That's the Lord God in all these. Every single dot is an Elohim, and he's the Lord God of Elohim. Now, if part of that invisible ball breaks off and goes and creates a world, who created it? The Lord God or Elohim that broke off? Well, the Lord God still did it. They're like subcontractors that went and just said, hey, we're going to do our own thing. We want host bodies. We're not going to stay with this big thing here. We want host bodies and have sex, and we'll be like God still, and we'll have children. So that's you know, it's a no-no, no idols, no host bodies. But they went ahead and did it anyway, and here we are. So wrap your mind around it, the concept. It's really not that hard. The Lord God, El, the Almighty God, and all those little dots of light angels are all together. But if a group peels off and goes away and creates an earth and a system, well, the Lord God still created it, but now it's separate from here and it's become separated. Understand? Okay, now, here it goes. And the Lord God, see right there, the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah Elohim, formed. I'm, I'm going to change this color. I want you guys to get this word right here. I'm going to change it to, let's do light green. See it? Light green. No, let's do a more prominent color. The Lord God formed. Let's see. Let You know what? Let's stick with the pink. The Lord God formed man from the dust okay now look i'm gonna i'm gonna change the dust to purple okay now the word formed means through the idea of squeezing into shape especially as a potter 
I'm going to change all these to pink. I want you to, because I want you to learn the word. Yatsar. Yat, 30, 33, 35. Okay, through the idea of squeezing into shape. And then I'll leave this yellow, especially as a potter. So you see this, especially as a potter? Okay, now look at the colors. It's pink, pink, this kind of uh, rust color. And then pink and yellow. Now, I want you to remember that because we just changed all these colors for the worm form, Yatsar. So he formed, it means especially as a potter. I'm going to change that to even brighter color. I'm going to make it green because he's the Lord God. He is, okay, through the idea of the squeeze shape, especially as a potter. From the dust, I'm going to change that. It means clay. The word dust means clay, and I'm going to make it green. There you go. So, formed man. Uh, you know what I'm going to take? I'm going to make all this green. I want it to match. I'm going to be OCD on this. There we go. Formed. There you go. Okay, so the Lord God, the Lord God formed. What's the word formed? As a potter, man from the clay. So, and man became a living soul. Says it right here because he breathed. What did he do to make him a living soul? He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life right there. See? And the, so when the Lord God forms his man, as a living soul, it's different than Genesis 1. They don't have a self-existent source of energy. They're being used as a source of energy from another dimension. That's what we got trapped in. We got in a snare. We got caught in a snare. We got caught in a trap that turns you upside down. That's what a snare is. Okay, so he breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See, man right there became a living soul. Okay, then right here, and it says, he calls him Adam. And then the Lord God caused a deep sleep, ready? A trance, deep sleep, now pay attention to stun, that is to stupefy with sleep or death. Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead, and Christ will give you life. To cast into a dead. So he put him into a deep sleep and cast him into a dead, and then he took Eve from his side, and he took so and he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh instead thereof, and then he pulled that out, flesh of my flesh, and we're gonna call her Eve. So in the garden now, and then he puts Adam and Eve in the garden, a protected area, and then the serpents in the garden. Here's the serpent, the serpent race. There's a whole race of beings that's already populated the entire earth. Male and female created he them. Him, male and female created he them. They're all there. Then that's the serpent race. So then Adam, well, Eve fornicates with the serpent, which is Lucifer's, Lucifer's race. She's impregnated with Cain. And then Adam knows her. That's why she's called an adulteress. And when it's speaking to her about being a woman, ready? And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, see the word woman? What does it mean? Adulteress, a woman. There's other words for woman, by the way. Yea, yeah, God said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said we, to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not 
eat it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. It means to lie with a woman. It's a sexual thing lest you die. So, Eve and the serpent race, Lucifer's boy, connect. She's impregnated, and then she knows Adam. She's impregnated by Adam, and she has heteropaternal superfecundation twins. Just like we're in a binary star system with a light star and a dark star in the universe, now we have the same thing in a host body system. Light in darkness growing in someone called Eve. Wow. Perfection. Okay, so now let's go back to what we were doing. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15. Ready? 1 Corinthians 15. And so it is written, the first man, Adam. See, look, Adam. Adam is Hebrew word 121. The first man, typically of Jesus, man is his. You better understand this. Man is his representative. Bam. Man as his representative. Hebrew word 121, Adam. The first man of Jesus, man, see man as his representative in the system we call the earth. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Well, we know that. We just read it because he's the potter's clay. Adam was formed as a potter from the clay. And the last Adam right here, see this, Adam? I'll make that light blue just so we can... Kind of distinguish it. And the last Adam, Hebrew word 76, Adam, uh, it says typically of Jesus, but it says the last. See the word last right here? It means the last Adam, typically of Jesus, man as his representative, was made a quickening spirit. Oh my gosh, that happens to be Jesus. That's why Jesus says, I am the first and the last. <laughs> Victory. And the two have become one. What does it say in the Bible Jesus' purpose was? Y'all know? Y'all know what Jesus' purpose? It says it in the Bible. It, it, it manifests right in front of you on Calvary, at Calvary where he was crucified. Jesus' purpose, Jesus' purpose, well, you know, to save us from our sins, right? Well, it says, and you he hath quickened right there, right? Does it say that, yes or no? And you he hath quickened. Well, wait a minute. Didn't it just tell us in 1 Corinthians 15? That the last Adam is a quickening spirit. Let's do that in a super cool bright yellow, huh? There you go. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit, right there. Okay, well let's go back to let's go back to Ephesians 2. So we know that the last Adam, which is Jesus, was made a quickening spirit. Okay, and you he hath quickened because jesus is that quickening spirit and you were dead in your trespasses and sin where in the times past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the prince of the power of the air let's make that green like a snake uh light green and who's that who's the prince of the power of the air he's the spirit that now worketh in the Children of disobedience. That's who that's Satan. So the prince of so now you've been quickened and you were dead in your trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, 
the spirit. So Satan is a spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. But what kind of spirit is he? He is a superhuman and angel demon right there. Now I'm going to highlight all that one crazy color. Let's do that. Maybe pink might work. Superhuman and angel demon. That's why the little building out there has a right side up and an upside down Led Zeppelin angel holding ZP. Kata, which means down, dynasteo, down dynasty. Because he brought all God's angels down. That's why a band called Led Zeppelin is called Led Zeppelin. Because the Led Zeppelin falls out of the sky, so do God's angels. Kata, down, you know, dynasty. Angels falling out of the sky. That's why one's right side up, one's upside down on the wall in the little building I built. Perfection, guys. You're looking at perfection. So, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit. I'm going to highlight that pink. I'm going to do it the same color because I want to show you the difference. Watch this. So, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Who among, among whom we also had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh. See, the lust of our flesh, because that's what kills you, the lust of the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That's the carnal mind that kills you, all that fleshy stuff. So now... Because we get quickened, we were quickened, but we used to be slaves to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit, and the word is, look at the word spirit, pneuma. I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it light blue here, but I'm going to leave it pink right, right there. But I'm going to leave this right here, 4151. The spirit, the pneuma, but look at what the word pneuma means. It means current of air, by analogy, spirit, that is human or rational soul vital principle mental disposition or superhuman an angel comma demon right there or i'm going to change that or to bright green i want it to stand out really stand out oh wrong ones there we go i'm going to change it to bright green the word or Superhuman and angel demon, which is what we are before we get converted, or divine Christ, Holy Spirit. I'm going to do all that green too. Divine. So you're either a superhuman and angel demon spirit, which is subject to eternal death, or you get converted and you become divine, God, Christ, Holy Spirit. So the word pneuma right here, it means either it's a it mean spirit but it means you're either a superhuman angel demon or you're divine god christ holy spirit well how do we know the difference jonathan well it tells you right there in john 3 it says jesus in his own word said verily verily isn't it funny he said it twice two times wonder why that that means properly firm that is trustworthy and surely, often, so be it. So be it, so be it. Surely, surely, I say unto thee. He said it twice for a reason, guys. Get it? There's two in one. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, to be born, to be to regenerate again from above. See it right there? Again. The word again means from above, from the first. Oh my gosh, be like from the like the first Adam. He cannot see. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Look at the word see. That's Jonathan Clack helping you out properly to see literally or figuratively. I'm going to change that. To know, to be aware of, to perceive, to be sure, to understand. You cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Now, here it is. There it is, guys. Verily, verily, he says it twice. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, like your mother's water breaking, no clones allowed, except a man be born of water and the spirit. See the word spirit right here? Let's see. Spirit. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight it a different color pink. I'll do it lighter so you can read it. Okay, it's the same number, 4151. It's Numa, I told you. But now you're now you're divine. Christ Holy Spirit. Because you've been born again from above, from the first, like Christ's representative, Adam. That's Christ's representative. The one that had the living soul. <laughs> now, watch this. <laughs> you ready? Okay, now let's do another scripture. Let's do Johnny's, the one that the Lord God used to show Jonathan Cleck everything. This is where it started. Because this is what happened to me in the, the room the night I got saved. Okay, now here we go. So let me let me show everybody that thought they knew uh, God, but they go to church and they think their religion is going to help them. Let me show you what's going on here. And the vision of all, that means all of them, everyone, is becoming to you as the words of a scroll that is sealed. He's talking about the Bible because they can't understand it, which men deliver to one that is learned in saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Because let me tell you something. The Bible is sealed. It is encrypted. You cannot understand it unless you've been converted, turned upside down and backwards. You can't. And being turned upside down and backwards means you are born of the Spirit from above. Because the flesh is down. It's in the down position, just like, you know, uh, Adidas original, everybody's hanging upside down. Yeah, that's it. So they can't read it for it is sealed. And if the book is del delivered to someone who is not learned, so saying, read this, I pray thee, he says, I cannot, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord says, and here is all you churchianity people. For as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth and with their lips, they do honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me. And their fear of me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work and a wonder among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. All you guys like John Hagee, Joel Osteen, all you Mormons, all you Catholics, all you guys that think that you got it wired, you better pay attention. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. I'm going to start right there. Remember, there was darkness over the land from the sixth hour. Six, there was darkness, host body system. So their works are in the dark. Think of host body. And they say, who seeth us? Because they're hiding inside host bodies. Who's hiding there, Jonathan? Demons from the other side that are yoked together with angels. And who knoweth us? Here's how you know. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. This is where Johnny freaked out the other night. <laughs> because I was like, I heard the Lord speaking to me saying, Jonathan, the potter's clay is Adam. And I'm like, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, Adam. Oh my gosh, 
the spiritual being that the Lord God, Jesus, put in, God's representative of him. I always said, well, if you turn things upside down, that means you belong to the Lord God. But I never said it in a different, I never said, dude, if you're esteemed as a potter's clay, you're esteemed as Adam before the fall. Get it? Because Adam was undefiled. He was the potter's clay. He was undefiled. He wasn't defiled till Genesis 3. The potter's clay. Surely you're turning the things upside down because everything in this world is upside down. So when we do it, we're really turning things up. That's why I said to Alex in Starbucks, your time is up. And Alex drew the Kobe Bryant ad a month before it ever came out when he started drawing fiercely. Kobe Bryant died today. You know what Kobe Bryant's ad was? Attack fast. Do you know I just finished the floor in there today? Yeah. I'm going to do some touch-ups tomorrow, just make it cooler, a little more like I want to see it. You've got some drizzle stuff on some of the metal. i got to like, clean it up. Y'all getting this? <laughs> oh, glory to God, Jesus. Jesus loves us so much. Jesus is our dad. Jesus is our dad came from heaven into the system that we got carried away captive we got carried away captive and we were made to serve in hard bondage in host bodies. That is your hard bondage. You're made to live out a life in a host body. That is your slavery. So if you love your life, you lose it. And if you lose your life, you find it. <laughs> yes, victory. V-I-C-T-O-R-I, -I. victory, victory is our cry. <laughs> Isn't that just the coolest thing in the world? Yeah. Dad, L, came to get us. He is Emmanuel. Dad, our dad is L. Our dad is the Almighty God. Elohim hates L. <laughs> Dude, they don't like him. He's here in their system. And so check it out. Now let me prove that to you. So L is the Almighty God, but Jesus is L in the flesh. And we know that because in Isaiah 7, it tells you exactly. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Look at this. I want to break it down for you. Okay, I'm going to do L always in bright green. There you go. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Hebrew word for 10, with us is L. Now watch this. See, Ima, the part in yellow, Imanu, when you speak other languages, you, you know you know these kind of things. Imanu, L. Imanu, that means with us is, and then L is the Almighty God. See, look, Hebrew word for 10, the Almighty God. So Jesus is Imanu. L. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna even highlight it that way. So see, Jesus is Imanu L, and I'm gonna make this part yellow. Jesus is with us as L, the Almighty God. See, the Almighty God is our dad, the one that formed Adam, the potter's clay. See, Gen Genesis 1 is their creation of man. Our dad formed Adam, and we are. We are like the sons of Adam. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> oh! Yeah. Oh, you know, God have mercy on the false prophet hunters. God have mercy on them. My God, they are trouble. Okay, so... Now, let's see. So, there you go. It was darkness from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. Because when you turn a six upside down and backwards, when you rotate it, so like six, if you flop it this way, it's one thing. But when you go like this, it's upside down and backwards. 100% nylon. Jonathan, read the tags and the clothes you're carrying. I'm like, that's so weird. Some horse is communicating with me. 
telling me to read the tags and the clothes I'm carrying. I know that just sounds insane. It was. I was like, what? Read the tag. And you know, imagine my girlfriend, <laughs> when I look at her, I'm like, uh, Lou, you know, I know I've been in a high-speed chase, and I know I'm... I deal with people that carry guns and stuff like that. And, you know, I know some weird shit's going on, but some source is telling me to read the, the tags and the clothing I carry. <laughs> she was probably like, <laughs> can you imagine what she was thinking? I'm all, no, some sources, some sources communicating with me, telling me to read the tags and the clothes I'm carrying. So I throw down my shirt and I read it. I'm like 100% nylon. What? It's like maybe I'm losing my mind. <laughs> it's like 100% nylon. It's like turn it upside. 100% six to nine. 100% no lion. Oh, 100% no lion, which is the truth. <laughs> and Jesus is the truth. <laughs> So, whoop, 100%, no, I just, I was like, dude, I wonder what he did to shock me like that that night. I mean, it was like, it was so crazy. I was like, I was like, whoa, what is this, man? You know, I was like, what am I getting beamed up? It was so crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, oh, 100%, no line, I got you. 100% no line is 100% truth. I just gotten my heads up. Get it? Heads up instead of down. Heads up. He's giving me my little, you're being called to service, Juanito. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué está haciendo? <laughs> What's going on, Mato? Yeah. So, there's that. Let's see. Isaiah 29, yeah. Surely you're turning up things upside down to be a sneeze of the potter's clay. Wait. Okay, let me just double check everything. Now, it's time for the coronavirus. Yeah, you know what? Do y'all know what corona means? I mean, I don't know. I, I know it from Spanish and stuff. Everyone's like, yo, of course, dude, it's beer. <laughs> like, yeah, well, the old Johnny would have said, well, <laughs> duh, Corona's like pretty good, but I like those Equis. <laughs> uh, I used to drink Dos Equis. It's, could it be anything else? <laughs> That's what I used to drink was Dos Equis, which means two X's. Yeah, anyway. So, the coronavirus now. Y'all know what corona means? Corona means crown. That's what corona means. Let me show you. Corona. Corona. A corona, meaning crown in Latin, is derived from ancient green. Uh, green. Greek. Corona. Garland or wreath an aura of plasma that surrounds the sun and other stars. Corona means crown. See it right there? Meaning crown. Okay, well, let me remind you guys of a couple pictures I've shown you of a place called the Vatican. And by the way, I'll show you a couple different images. Uh, we're going we're gonna to enlarge these. We're going to take the time. We're going to enjoy this video. I'm just, now it's time for Johnny to have some fun. Here's a serpent wearing a crown. And see, there is a serpent, right? There's the split tongue. See, isn't that fascinating? Wow, isn't that just amazing that they put a sidewalk that's a split tongue? It's a tongue coming out of the mouth of the serpent. So we're behind the head of the serpent. By the way, the shape of that's like an adder, you know, like a very poisonous snake. That's the shape. I used to catch snakes a lot. I was like a snake hunter. And uh, the, when you see a snake with a, a head like that, uh, you know it's it's venomous. Anyway, so that's like a head of an adder. And so this this serpent has a crown. That's the Vatican. The word Vat, Vatican, the word Vatican means divining serpent. Okay. And you know what? 
I'm gonna like stop. I'm gonna knock down some some of these real quick. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna keep that one up. I'll keep this one up. I'll take Genesis down. And let's just make sure I, I got some other stuff. I want to show you guys some stuff. Okay. So let me show you this. I want to show you another image of this because I've drawn this thing several times. So, we're, so there's a serpent wearing a crown. Okay. There's no doubt about what that is. Now I want to go back to my other folder. Uh, let's see. Looks like it kicked it out a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to show you the front of the Vatican, and then uh, I was gonna I was gonna just type in for you to show you Vatican is from Vatis, and then can means serpent. Vatis means divining, and then can serpent. Like yeah, you know you'll you'll find it a lot in in ancient uh, uh, South American cultures. Teotihuacan, you know Teotihuacan and Cuclacan. So anyway, so here is the Vatican divining serpent, which means prognosticating, like making the future happen according to your will, basically. So here is the serpent wearing a crown. So there is a snake wearing a crown. Now, I love you in Christ, but if you don't see that, you are just absolutely blind. You do not have the spirit of the living God if you cannot see the obviousness of the truth. Now I'm going to show you an image of the Vatican from an above aerial view. And I want you to see that, you know, I have it laid uh, sideways. But here is the serpent's head. But see, now you can see they purposely built this sidewalk to be a split tongue coming from the mouth where the mouth of the serpent is. See it? So they, they put it there. They tried to hide it relatively well, but it's still very obvious because the Lord gave me this ability to see. And then you can see that the, the upside down cross, which represents uh, our race of beings, has been turned upside down. The cross is lit. So right here would be the keyhole. I'll show it to you from a different orientation in just a minute. So you can, you can see it. Let's see, there we go. Now, the point I wanna make though, is I want you to see the serpent wearing a crown. Now, let me show you this. This is from, I know, you know, the, I have a lot of pictures from the Vatican and there are different parts of the Vatican and church. This is the double-headed phoenix, guys. Now, this is, this is, represents male energy and female energy in the same host body. And it's ri the phoenix rising from the pit, male and female. And you see, this is a DNA strand one and a DNA strand two. And the crown right here is the head of a serpent. You see the head of the serpent? There's the eye, there's the eye. Like the pits in the nose, the mouth right here. That's the head of a serpent. It's a crown. So the crown of the double-headed phoenix, which is the male and female, is a serpent. The serpent is the crown of the host body, the male and female system. That's what that double-headed phoenix represents, male and female energy, the same host body. Okay, so now let's talk about the coronavirus. Okay, do you all know that now they're saying, well, it came from bats, but now they're saying, no, they, they believe it, it comes from bats, but from snakes. Nudja, studying the Journal of Medical Virology, hypothesized that the disease officially 2019 NCOV likely lives and grows in snakes. Many banded crate and the Chinese cobra snakes believed to be sold at the Wuhan market may be the sources of the coronavirus. This is two days ago. So this is the new source of the coronavirus. Now don't forget, corona means crown and it comes from a snake. Look at what you're looking at, a crown and a snake. That's over the host body. What is the host body? The host body is an idol. It says it in Genesis 1, let us create male and female in our own vain show host body. 
representative figure, especially an idol. The human host body is an idol. It's idol worship. Showed you Exodus 20, commandment number two. Do not make any likenesses. Host bodies. Do not make any embodiments. Told you. Now, so the coronavirus is comes from snakes. Corona means crown. So now we have crown and snake. The Vatican is a crown and snake. And what do they worship? And what do they worship at the Vatican? They worship at an altar that's a big dead sheep that's a penis and a vagina. They worship the host body, which is an idol. And again, I'll click on it just to make sure you see and understand because the next thing I'm going to show you, I want to thank Corey for sending me the next thing you're about to see. You see the big dead sheep right here? Everybody worshiping in front of their big idol because it's their system. They started it. They know it's theirs. They're Elohim. They run everybody. They're killing all God's children by trapping them in host bodies and killing them and sending them to the pit by giving them their own evil doppelganger from the pit. Now, watch this. Did y'all know the N95 surgical masks run out at retail outlets? MOH assures public there is enough stock. So MOH uh, is Singapore several retailers, uh, retailers ran out of N95 masks and surgical masks on Fridays. Okay, so, you know, like the World Health Organization is saying, hey, don't worry, uh, we'll have more, uh, we'll have more masks for everybody. See, out of masks up today. Oh, that's good. We're out of, we're out of masks. There's, the, don't worry. I wonder what Corey showed this to me today. N95 surgical masks run out. Let's look up. N95. N is the 14th letter of the alphabet. 95. 1495. Idolatries. Uh, image worship. Idol worship. And the Bible says men began to worship the creature instead of the creator. And now they're running out of N95. Isn't it fascinating that it's the number N, I mean, the letter N is 1495, Corona, Crown, Virus, it's Crown, it's Crown. The Corona is also part of your eye, you know, like the all-seeing eye, the serpent, Crown, you getting this? It's starting, folks. The death and the doom and the destruction are at the door. I just finished the building, basically. It's, for all practical purposes, it could be done right now. I could say I'm done. I want to go put the little things in that the Lord had me get. You know, it's very simplistic, little countertop and little two little bar stools that are red to sit on. I know that's very telling to me. I, I understand it. We're the sons of Adam. We are the sons of Adam. The potter's clay. How do I know? Because I turned everything upside down in their system. That's why they hate me. If they hated me, they'll hate you. How's it feel to know the truth? How's it feel? You know the truth. You know the mystery of life. You know who you are and where you came from. You can rest assured that Jesus loves you. Now, I want to talk to people about like medications. Okay. I know people, you know, if you read Revelation, it says all whoremongers, all sorcerers, all dogs there outside the city. And sometimes when you look up the word sorcerers, you'll see the word pharmacy in there. A lot of people panic. 
let me tell you something. If you're taking medicine and it's legit and you have a reason to take it, some people have been on antidepressants for years, it's okay. You're okay. If you're just taking them just because it's like, I got to get a buzz, that's not okay. And you should just tell God, I'm sorry, and start weaning off if that's the only reason you're taking them. Some people ask me, what about smoking pot, Jonathan? The Bible says all things are permissible, not that all things are expedient. You should know yourself. If you're smoking a lot of weed and it's you can't get anything done and you know, you got to smoke weed when you get up, smoke weed during the day, smoke weed to go eat, you know, like, come on. You know, if you smoke a little pot here and there, who cares? That's like, dude, whatever. Right? So everything in moderation, nothing in excess. Is it okay to drink? Sure. It's okay to drink a little bit. Who cares? Bible says, have a glass of wine. I think Paul told Timothy, hey, you have some wine. It's good for your stomach. You know, and helps with digestion. The first miracle Jesus ever did was turning water into wine, dude. <laughs> it's like, oh no, don't drink it. <laughs> like, uh, you know why he? It says he had he turned it. They ran out of wine at the wedding, and then he turned the water into wine. And the guy that was throwing the wedding party, he was like, oh my gosh. Usually the best wine is served first. And then afterwards, they bring out the trash wine because everybody's already all, yeah, they can't even tell what they're drinking. And he's like, you save the best for last. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of like now, man, the best for last. Yep. So is it okay to drink? Yeah. Is it okay to overdrink? No. Is it okay to lie? Absolutely not. If you've lied, that's the number one don't do it thing. Don't lie, even if it means your life. Tell the truth. Okay? So do not lie. Do not cheat. Do not steal. If you've done any of those things, just admit it. Come clean. You'll be okay. Um... Again, medication in and of itself is not evil. Pushing medication is evil if on people. Don't do that. If you need medication, antidepressants, because you've got some issues or stuff and you've been on it a long time, you can't just quit that stuff. It'll freaking totally jack you up. So you'd have to wean off over a period of time. If you, if you feel convicted today and you're like, well, Johnny, I really have just been taking it just because I like it. And that's the only reason. Well, then say, Lord, you know what? Help me cut back. And just your effort in showing that you're willing to start cutting back uh, shows it. And, you know, what I've done before and what, what I've had to do, because, guys, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a beaten up. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you don't want to hear how beaten up I am. And I've had maybe Kat or Sarah or someone will leave a comment or Mike or Corey or the people that have stayed with me, I mean, I've walked in here in the morning getting ready to work, and I've literally just been in tears. No, I mean literally crying, like, oh, okay, I can do it. I'm not joking. I, some days I'm just a okay. It's, some days I, I walk like, a, a, you know, I'm, a, yeah, I look like I've been beaten with sticks, man. I'm all hunched over like Quasimodo. It just depends on the day. But anyway, it's okay to take meds. It's not okay to, to take them, you know, in the wrong way. So don't freak out, okay? If there's stuff you want me to talk about, questions, leave them on, leave them in the, in the comment section. And I'll, I'll just tell you what the Lord's shown me. Because I go to the Lord, I, I literally like, Hey, man, I need to know your thought about smoking pot because people ask me. I smoke pot a little bit, but who cares? It's like, whatever. It's like, I don't really these days particularly care for it because it's like, you know, it's like, uh, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, I, I have trouble 
dialing it down. I'm pretty high, highly amped up and wired uh, energy wise. So when it's two or three in the morning and I'm like, I just got to go to bed. Well, you could, the doctor could give you Ambien, which he, uh, the doctor's given me Ambien before. I ate a cheeseburger while I was asleep. <laughs> I ate a cheeseburger? What? Yeah. Right in front of Clay and Trinity. <laughs> it was crazy. I literally was asleep and I ate a cheeseburger like like I was a woodchuck. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> yeah, so you know, uh, would I prefer just to take a little puff of pot than that? Oh, hell yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to you know, a lot of people have very strange things happen to them on some pharmaceuticals. And I'm one of those people that has like opposite chemistry. Yeah. So, you know, you know, you know, in your own heart, what's right. And go, now that you've been converted, you can go straight to dad and say, dad, you know, just can make it heavy on my heart. If I'm doing something wrong, show me. You don't think your dad wants to correct you as your dad? What are you joking? I'm a dad. Like, oh, uh, no, go ahead and drink a lot and go take the car out and, yeah, drive fast. <laughs> it's like, whatever. It's, you know, come on, you know. So anyway, just, yeah. Anyway, so I just wanted to address that because I saw it in the comment section. So I just, you know, I wanted to make sure I talked about it a little bit so you don't panic because the king's coming. And when he comes, you do not want to have unresolved issues. You do not want to have unresolved issues. Put it all out on the table. This is who I am. This is what's up. This is what you see is what you get. Okay, so um, oh yeah. don't stop. Oh. Roar. <laughs> Arr. So anyway, yeah, I love you guys. So anyway, yeah, the building's done. Yeah, it's done. It's when I say it's done, I, you know, I get the little tweaky, tweaky stuff, but it's not no major stuff to do anymore. I mean, I could really call it a day just by grinding off the the flames, a.k.a. sperm that are, you know, the sun. I'll show it to you later. Whatever. We'll do a video on that. So anyway, again, I'm working on the new platform to deliver like all the goods, you know, all the stuff I've been working on for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try and put it together the best I can for everybody. So anybody that may need it, if you want to leave a jump drive around, I'll try and do a video where I, I show you how to put it on a jump drive. By the way, someone sent, sent me, you know, a check. And they asked me to put something on a jump drive. I put it aside and I don't know where it is. If you were the person that sent like a $400 check and you wanted that jump drive, I, I'm. Uh, could you please just send me your name and say it was me? And I don't want to get more than one letter that says that. Otherwise, that would be dishonest. But whoever you are, um, I really would like to send you your jump drive. I'll have Dave the Wave do it. Now, here's the other thing. I'm not the jump drive guy, okay? But in that case, I really would do it. Yeah, just some I should have done, and I just, you know, I, I'm so busy. I put stuff I'm, where, like, I mean to get to this, and I mean to get to that, and then everything gets moved around. I have no idea. So, anyway, forgive me for that. And then, um, you know, again, letters that are over, you know, two pages, I don't have time. It's crazy presumptuous to think I, I can read a six-page letter or something. Super crazy presumptuous. I won't. So anyway, I'm too busy. All right. So anyway, guys, I love you in Christ, and I'm so excited. How would you all like that? The scriptures are perfection. Now, here's the other thing. I have a lot more scriptures. Oh, you know what? I got to do a couple that are still on the board. These are super important. Let's end with these. Okay, let's end with some scripture. Okay, here we go. You ready? So just to prove everything out again, just to prove it all out, 
So the Jews are going to stone Jesus. The Jews took up stones to stone him again. And Jesus answered them and said, Many good works have I shown you from my Father, because he is the Father in the flesh. For which of these works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work be stoned thee not, but for blasphemy. So they're accusing him of speaking evil, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. He was the Lord God. He's Emmanuel. So he is the Almighty God that made himself a man. Isn't it fascinating? They got it backwards. Thou being a man, makest thyself God. They got it totally backwards. It should have been, he is the Almighty God that made himself a man. And look what Jesus says to them. Jesus says to them, is it not written in your law? I said, I want to highlight this. I said, see, he's even showing them that it was him that did it. It was him that said they were gods. He said, because he wrote the Bible. Jesus spoke the Bible through everyone that ever spoke a word in the Bible. Jesus spoke it. Jesus said, I said, ye are God. See, he said it himself. So now watch what, watch the juxtaposition here. Jesus said, he answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. Because he's, he's the almighty God in a body. And he knows he already spoke every word of the New Testament through humans. And so he goes, isn't it written in your own law? I said, ye are gods. He knows what he said back in Psalm 82. And then look what he says. If he called them gods, now he's talking about the guy who he spoke it through. If he called them gods, the psalmist, unto whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken, then say ye of him who the Father sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the Son of God. So think about what he just said. I'm going to give you Jonathan Cleck vernacular here. He's like, whoa, time out. Yo, doggy, what are you going to stone me for? What What good works are you going to stone me for? Okay, maybe that's not totally my vernacular. Yo, home dog. <laughs> He's like, oh, wait a minute. What are you guys, What what good works are you guys going to stone me for? And they're like, yo, dude, we're not stoning you for good works. We're stoning you for speaking evil, bro, because you're just a man, but you're trying to make yourself a god. And Jesus is like, whoa, wait a minute. Don't your own scripture say that I said y'all are you're, you're, you're gods? It says it in your own scriptures. And you know the scriptures can't be broken, bro. So what's up? What the? Well, what is it? What's up? That was pretty good, right? <laughs> pretty good, Johnny. Like, yeah. So he's he's asking him, like, wait a minute, guys. Nah, nah. Put the rocks that rock down, rock down. Take five with the rocks. Your own scriptures say that you're gods, so you can't throw your stupid rock at me, okay? Because it's written in your own law that I said ye are gods. And you all guys know the scriptures can't be broken. But what? That's what he said. But just not like I said it. He was quoting Psalm 82. So let's go to Psalm 82. So Psalm 82. It says, see, he knew he said it. He said, I have said ye are gods right there. So now, then he said, but look, see, because we are, we're all children of the Most High God. We are his children, all of us are. But we're all in host bodies, which are idols, and they are a death sentence. And how did we get here? Well, we fell. We're fallen angels. I have said, ye are gods, right there. I mean, you can't argue with that. And all of you, not some of you, and all of you are children of the Most High, duh. 
But this would be a good moment for one of that that song. I like big butts. <laughs> it's like this is a big butt right here. A big, big butt. But but you shall die like men. See, so you're all gods. I have said you're gods. You're all children of the most high. But you're going to die like men, dog. You're in trouble. And you fall, you're going to fall like one of the princes. And then it says, arise, O God, judge the earth. Do you know why it says arise, O God? Because those of us that are risen, I've already been resurrected. I'm judging angels because the truth that lives in me is what's judging them. Because I am Israel. I am part of the collective sum of he will rule as El because Emmanuel lives in me. Yo, got it? Yeah, because see, I become a little Jesus. We're all little Jesuses. We're all little microcosms of the big thing. We are Yisrael, which means he will rule as El. We used to be Jacob, just like Jacob had to wrestle with God. And then after he wrestles with God, he's like, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And then God says, what is your name? What do you do? It's like, dude, what do you think? You don't think the Lord God knew Jacob's name? Of course he did. He wanted him to admit who he was. He's like, I'm Jacob. Because, you know, he stole the birthright from his brother. And then God says, because you've admitted who you are, I will bless you. And by the way, I'm not going to call you supplanter anymore. I'm going to call you Israel. Yisrael means he will rule as El, the Almighty God. So even though we got drug into their system, we get converted, we take over the system, and we rule as El. Because we're all El, the cumulative sum. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are him. He is us. We are him. We are all one. Oh, that reminds me of a really great scripture right now, right now. I just happen to have it on my desktop. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Yay! Even the spirit of truth. Look at the word spirit. Capital Numa. Superhuman angel, demon, eh, wrong, Holy Spirit, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me. Because I live, you shall also live. And in that day, what day? The day that it happens to each one of us. And in that day, you shall know that I am in the Father. And you are in me. And I in you. Oh. We are Israel. We have become Israel, we were Jacob, the supplanter in their system. We wrestle with God and we get converted. We become Israel because our eyes become single because he made the two one. I, I showed you earlier, what was his purpose in Ephesians 2? I never finished it. I showed you what our condition was in Ephesians 2 when we walked according to we, and you, he has quickened. That's the second Adam, Christ, a quickening spirit. And you, he has quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sins, when you walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, superhuman angel, demon, at work in the hearts of the children of disobedience. Now let's go back to Ephesians 2, and let's hit the ball out of the park, guys. Ready? Dun, 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 dun. And you he hath quickened because the last Adam is a quickening spirit. His name's Christ. He's the first and the last. 
Okay, we're in times past. You walked according to the prince, the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who's that? He's the spirit. Who's that? The superhuman angel demon at work in the children of disobedience because they followed the lust of the flesh. But remember, Jesus is called the prince of peace. Now, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off because of the demon thing, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. Peace. It means to join. See? To join. He is our peace. <clears throat> because he joined us together right there. He is our peace. Watch this. Who hath made both one. That's it. He made your superhuman angel demon one, and he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh, because the flesh is what kills you, having abolished in his flesh the enmity which started in the Garden of Eden. I will put enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law and the commandments, Contained in ordinances to make of to make in himself to make in himself in himself of the two one new man. So he makes a superhuman angel demon, which is two things into one. The demon dies. He kills the demon. It's cast out of you completely. You're converted to the Holy Spirit. And now you are at peace. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the Lord God, my creator. He's the bravest man that's ever been on this planet. He didn't sin. He, was, he loved everybody. And he willingly went to a cross knowing what was going to happen to him. I've been in some scary situations in my life, but I cannot even imagine what it would be like knowing I was going to a cross and I was going to be tortured and made to walk through the streets and be reviled by everyone. And he loved everyone anyway. All glory to Jesus that made the two one in Christ. Yeah? Okay, that bear already got a hug. This is a big bear hug. Yes! Group hug? Group hug? Can you feel it? I'm trying. Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's a good hug. All right. There you go, guys. I love you in Christ. Let's see. Don't stop. Don't stop. Hey, if I can keep going in this just totally ass kick body, you guys got to keep going too, man. Okay? Just, it's all about endurance now. We are at the finish line. I know y'all know it. Coronavirus, really, from snakes. Crown, snake, hello. Kobe Bryant died today. That's crazy. Remember Alex in Starbucks when I told uh, the devil, when I told the angel of the bottomless pit, your time is up? Right then, Alex drew the Kobe Bryant ad like three weeks, a month before it came out. Attack fast. I find it weird. Kobe Bryant died today. Nine people in the helicopter. <laughs> kind of weird. I don't believe in coincidences. All right, guys. I love you in Christ. Jesus is the king of kings. He's a Lord of lords. And the only way to the Father is through the Son. I mean, duh. <laughs> There's no other way. He's the only name under heaven whereby, whereby you may be saved. I love you in Christ. God bless you guys. All right.